Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and uh, I got a brew. Uh, so I ran into something similar to like this one day on the ladder, and it was a pretty sweet build. I'm trying to recreate it the best I can, but effectively what this is is a blue-white uh, affinity. So for those of you who aren't familiar with affinity, it's typically the archetype when you're playing a lot of small artifact creatures that get bigger uh, throughout the game. It's an affinity, I'm calling it affinity dance or artifact dance. Um, basically what you're trying to do is get a bunch of cheap artifacts creatures out and then with Steel Overseer you can uh, tap it to put counters on your creatures. Uh, so we have Ginger Brute uh, which is a one mana pseudo unblockable. Uh, you have Stone Coil Serpent which scales to the late game well. Uh, has protection from multicolor so it's a good way of getting around most of like blue white control. It has reach as well so it can block um, Dream Trawler for days, can't be bounced by Teferi. Uh, because it's zero in its casting cost, it also can't be Conqueror's Death. So really at a blue-white, they can either Glass Casket it or a uh, Banishing Light, which most lists are moving away from. Um, then we have Emery that fills our yard, as well as allows us to recast any of these that die. Uh, one thing that they had which was interesting is Clockwork Servant. So basically with Adamant, if you pay three the same color, it gets to draw a card. Um, so it's kind of a cycler there. Uh, you have uh, Arcanist Owl. It's another way for us to get card advantage out of the deck. Um, it allows you to dig deeper into your library and can pretty much pull out almost the entirety of the deck. Uh, so you're pretty much always guaranteed a hit. It itself is an artifact and can put counters on it. Uh, then in terms of the support spells, a couple Dance of the Mance. Uh, when all our creatures die, we can pump mana into it and get them all back bigger. Um, Teferi is a way we can do this instant speed, shuts off counters, helps the blue-white mirrors. Uh, seems a little odd in a creature deck that board wipes, but this is a concession to Mono Red being faster than us, so we're kind of walking more mid-rangey. It's also another main board answer to Dream Trawler, uh, so it's a way there. Uh, Karn is basically to tutor up stuff into our sideboard, has the fringe case of being able to shut off Oven in the main board, uh, but can also animate our non-creature artifacts that we fetch out uh, to make them stronger that way there. Uh, also this just happens to make this a 3-3. Three, three. Um, so it's pretty much just to go fetch stuff from the sideboard. Um, so we'll see how much we need this might replace it actually. Uh, Conqueror's Death is just good overall removal, can get back stuff from our graveyard, and then a couple Ugins at the top end gives us card advantage, makes all our uh, artifacts cost less. Um, which is kind of cool in that case there as well. Um, and then it's minus just destroys anything. Mana base wise, pretty standard. We got a couple temples, a couple fable passages. Because our decks are very heavy in terms of uh, colorless, we're able to run a few more colorless spells. Um, I may actually be running too many. So I'm going to actually cut a mobilized district and go up another planes. Uh, the deck list on the site right now in Aether Hub is a little outdated for the mana base, but I'll update that. But basically, a couple of Fable Passages for fixing, and then Field of Ruin, which is pseudo-fixing as well. And the Karn's Bastion, we can proliferate. When we're putting counters on things, we can help them all get bigger that way. The sideboard-wise, we got a couple fetchable one ofs So we have Soul Guide Lantern, which can get something to exile opponent's graveyard. A couple glass caskets for aggro, spyglass when we need to shut off specific planeswalkers like Nisa, uh, Mystic Forge for card advantage. Uh, we can play stuff uh, off the top of our library, a Meteor Golem as catch all removal, and then the rest of the sideboards Devout Decree versus the red or black matchups, uh, a couple vetoes and disputes, and then um, another Shatter the Sky for the aggro matchup when we need to pivot to kind of a more mid range strategy. So that's the list. Um, I basically had a bad run yesterday, so we kind of fell down to Diamond. Uh, I was trying out a few decks on Ranked and just didn't do well, so we'll play Ranked, can't really drop any further. So let's fire this up, see how it goes. So first, uh, I'll be playing Saturday. Um, going to be testing more Doom Foretold for the event next weekend, the Mythic uh, Points Challenge. So I'll probably be streaming that uh, on the 29th. Uh, so if you can, stop by. It'd be awesome if you could. Um, they have Lightning Bolt Sleeves, so they're a mono-red player, right? 
and then the shatter this guy is good in this matchup so let's keep it this hand looks like we're blue white control okay so we metagame them and we totally saw okay we can stop drawing lands now Okay, so they have the robber. What did they hit here? Okay, well they didn't hit any action and they took another land off the library. Um, I think here, I want them to commit more to the board so I'm actually gonna plus to fairy here. Both of these have haste so there's not much value in doing that. And then because I have the board wipe, I want to try to have this survive. Okay, they just main phase infuriate. So we don't get any value off that, unfortunately. And they hit a dance of the man, which sucks. It's usually one of the ways we can try to combo them. So opponent's not playing more to the board right now, so I think we just Arcanus Thou. What they might have is a stomp. Um, in lieu of mono red and just how this hand's shaping up, I'm going to get another Arcana style. This could be Ember Cleave this turn. So. This soaks up more damage. Okay, they just have the Infuriate. That's probably better. And we haven't seen as many of these Infuriate versions. Okay, and they have Annex. Am I just literally all drawing those? Um, so let's just Shatter here, but it's not the best because they have the Annex out, so we don't get the full value there. They're going to get four tokens. And then with the pump off this, it works out pretty well for them. They don't have to commit more to the board and they deal eight damage. I need two blockers this turn unless they have an infuriate. They just have rock. Yeah, we're dead. Yep. So I'm not going to show them more. Mono Red just might be pushing this out. Um, so Shatter, Glass Caskets, Devout Decrees. Uh, probably that would be it. Um, the Conqueror's Death are still pretty good. Steel Overseer is a little iffy. Teferi helps with the Ember Cleaves portion. Trim down a couple Owls, get rid of those. Um... So they might think we're control, so they'll bring in... The Brutes are actually not that good. Cut down. Oh no, I want my... What do I have, 60? What did they cut? Steel Overseer, we can keep the Overseer, cut down a Clockwork Servant, but Clockwork's a little bit bigger. Could potentially draw us cards, Conquer's Death Exiles. Let's maybe run with this, just see how it goes. Or... Let's do it like this. Gives us a turn one play, just in case they play uh, the, the elemental. Um, we can try to aggro them this game. At least, well, we're not really going to aggro them, but hit them for some damage. So, funnily enough, Tin Street can block us. Stone Coil is actually not bad here because I can do it for three and then it becomes a pretty good blocker. Oh, that's 
That's very bad. Oh, they didn't have enough cards, so they don't get to take that. So we can keep trying to race them. With the Annex out, it makes the Shatter worse. So I think what we do... Because if they have the Ember Cleave next turn, it's pretty bad. Because the Annex gets pretty chunky. Okay, with the second one on top, I'm fine to kind of overcommit here. Because then that could sweep up the Annex tokens, even if we play around it a bit. Okay, so they just have Torbrand. I think we just trade proactively here. They get the tokens, but ooh, glass caskets nice. So that exiles there. Then we just play this out. They can still have the cleave. So we'll get some damage in, but I'm going to wipe the board here. Chandra is actually unfortunate. Stop trying to activate. So we got a block here, but Torbrand's going to deal a whole bunch of damage to us. And then Chandra comes back. We have Conquer's Death for the following turn. So I have to do this, but we're already at four life. Mono Red's just, it's so punishing to try to build anything that's just, they have Rimrock or something. Stomp, they have Annex. Yeah, I can't do anything. I take the two and I die. Ay ay ay. So one thing I was considering was like corridor monitor as a one four. It can block and then you can untap your thing, but it might be that we're just too slow with this deck to be able to assemble. If we run into another mono red deck, I'm going to make a change. I'm going to get rid of Karn and then bring in uh, Glass Caskets in the main board just to have more interaction. Uh, this hand doesn't do anything. This hand's okay. Um... Gonna put the shatter away. And I'm gonna lead with the steel overseer. Hopefully we don't see basic mountain here. Temple of Malady. That actually works out nice because it means we can draw something off the clockwork servant. Okay, they just paradise druid. So a couple things here I can do, um, I can Stone Coil Serpent and Ginger Brute and then tap or I can draw a card. I think we do the latter because it puts the most power onto the board. And Salt Eye Colors typically, if they do they'll run Ritual, let's say. 
So this one's worse against Ritual, but better against like Vraska if they have it for the turn. I would like a blue source to get Emery going. Um, so here I'm gonna draw a card first in case we draw a blue source for Emery. Okay, another castle. Depending on how they block, I'll activate Steel Overseer. Um, so I can play this out for one. And then put a counter on it again. Or I can just play it out next turn for a lot more. I think we just do this. See if they want to trade. And if they're brazen borrowing this, it's not the most value for them. So this game's a lot better against compared to like the mono red matchup where we just weren't getting ahead. I doubt they have board wipes main. They might have like casualties of war, which really only takes out. And at this point, if they have assassin's trophy, it's fixing our mana. Okay, so we got Ugin as a follow up. If they just brazen borrow here, it doesn't do anything. They eat to extinction, sure. So we might actually win without them knowing we have blue mana in our deck. Um, I can just activate the castle on end step to make another token. That would be casualties and they're dead. Okay, so in this matchup, I probably want the forge. This is likely a Nisa matchup, so let's bring in these and let's bring in the disputes. Uh, this is likely also an Uro matchup. So I don't think Karn really does anything here. So let's get rid of Karn. Conquer's Death probably has text. Uh, Teferi, I doubt they bring in counters to be honest, but it can help with the Brazen Borrower. Shatter this guy's interesting. I think we need to be the aggressor in this matchup. So we can play like that. Like if they're gonna build their board of Nisa tokens, we're probably dead. So we wanna try to control at least on the play. Um, Ginger Brute's fine. Spyglass we need. Probably just get rid of Teferi in this matchup. Or yeah, cause you have the aggressive. One cut, one cut. Uh, probably Overseer, they're probably bringing in more like targeted removal. I like Emery a little bit better here. And then because they showed Brazen Borrower, like it's easy for them to bounce our thing and reset it. Kind of surprised that turn when they bounced um, Serpent, they just didn't bounce thing. <sighs> this hand doesn't really do much. It's a lot of mana, but not getting anywhere. Putting away a card. Let's put away Karn's Bastion. So I can Ginger Brood on one. I can then Emery on two. So they probably have Ritual Acid in the, the board now.
So I'm attacking first because this might get a response out of them. Cast out Emery. So Emery fills our yard. And we got quite a few hits with it, but that's pro okay, it's just Gross Spiral. This can be Uro, it can be Vraska. Voracious Hydra, okay. Okay, so since we got Steely, let's make this unblockable. We'll attack in. It's probably Nisa. You can get enchantments. So I can poke Nisa for two, but I think we get the fly. You don't get reach, right? I think we need to try to dig for a Conqueror's Death here. Whew. Both of these are interesting. But I think we go with spyglass because it immediately shuts it off this they have turns to answer it plus we could only really cast for one mana so they might prompt them they don't realize this is an artifact we can get casualty divorced here Lucranos. So they can fight some stuff here. Let's see how they attack in. So let's go activate now. This puts more damage onto the Pelucranos, so then it can't fight again. And they don't have enough mana to activate it again in response. And they Tyrant Scorn. So they put a lot of effort there. Um, so I can attack into Nisa here. They can also activate the Pelucranos again. I can destroy their overgrown tomb. Uh, they also have Hydrate Crisis, which I just can't answer at this point. They still get the mana doubling. And they also have Tyrant Scorn. Should have probably done it on their end step because the thing is now they could have floated the mana and get the Tyrant Scorn. Kill this now. I think we're dead though on this one. If I know that they had this many creatures. Yeah, I'm not coming back from this. Problem is with Hydra Crisis, it gets a little troublesome. 
So we want shatters. Uh, with them bringing Tyron Scorn in, I don't think we like Overseer is the way we win. They're not so they can get back thing, but I think it's a little too slow. In this case, it's also just a one of. Let's maybe move the forge out and. On the play, I think we want the Overseers. Spyglass. Owls are card advantage. This is also card advantage. We just really want to draw out the game longer. No, I think we need Spyglass for our uh, thing. Um, what to cut, what to cut. I like Brood on one. Okay, let's just do Clockwork Servant. It's a little in contention, like do we hold up the counters? Because they also don't deal with, maybe Mystical Disputes should come out. They're not really blue based that much. Okay, keep this in. Conquer's death will help us catch up. And then we have this Dance of the Mans to work towards. Shatter's actually not bad either. We want to be able to deal with the initial Nisa. So this can be Tyrant Scorn. Okay, we need Lions. Can also be growth spiral. So obviously we'd feel a lot better if we had counters. Problem is we both need lands. Oh, they got cry. Well, that just completely ravages our plan. You're not really helping. Because now Dance is off there. And they could go Nisa here. I think we're okay if we can get running lands. Because, like, we Conquer's Death this. And then I can Ugin and start trying to get some card advantage. Okay, so we got the Field of Ruin. Attack in. So I think here let's field of ruin the temple of malady. It takes them off a creature. It gets us our blue source, and then I can emery. And then depending on what we mill, I can bring it back with the Conqueror's Death this turn. Well, there's all our lands to cast Ugin. What I can do is I can bring back this Skull Dispute. So I'm going to keep the this one because it lets us cast. Um, so I'd like Owl, but that's also a card draw. So let's do Clockwork Servant. We'll pay Adamant. So we draw a card. And that will just pass the turn. So right now I can get 
a conquer's I need one more land for conquer's death but I can do arcanist owl to do emery oh sorry spyglass arcanist owl conquer's death so we can etg here although I don't mind the mill it's a pretty good tempo play for us So here I'm going to attack first. And then we Ugin, start getting uh, some value here. Ooh, you also cost zero. You know what, I probably should have held that. Because if they have Cry, then that hurts. So now I can get back the Arcanist Owl for value. So Ugin has the cost reduction ability. I could also preemptively get a Spyglass and just name Nisa. Ooh. Yeah, that's a that's a casualties. See if they want to take the block. So I was hoping they kind of baited to that. I want to make this bigger. So we get the land back that allows us to ritual if need be. So I can get back. I think I want to wait so I can conquer's death with it. So let's just make a token this end step. So if they play out something big, then like I can shut off planeswalker even if I have to just with a board wipe here seems like opponents got all kind of reactive spells so I was actually good so let's activate like that because I want to make this so it's four. Um, so I can see what's in the opponent's hand and it gives me something to play this turn. So I can play around. So they just have double casualties here. Um, so this would be Nisa. So they're going to probably take me off a of land here. And they can do, so they can do Artifact. Okay, so they leave that out. One, two, okay, so Vito's actually nice. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can do X4, get back. It's not really much. I can get back a couple Arcanist Owls. So I can put some pressure on them, which is probably what we just want to do at this point. So I do Arcanist Owl, Arcanist Owl, Clockwork Servant, and I can do Backup Splyglass Glass on Pelucranos, or I can just make this a Hasty Boy. Let's just do Hasty Boy. It puts pressure on them now. Got Overseer. And then this is pro um, pro casualties. Poke in for another damage. Just pass the turn. So next turn what I can do is I can hold up the veto and get Steel Overseer out.
because they're actually okay so they have voracious hydra Let's see what they fight here they go there uh, rena decided to take a little break so didn't get ca uh, caught there so basically that turn was uh, play out steel overseer play out stone coil for two and then uh, finish them off. So here we're just gonna Ugin down, take on Voracious Hydra, and then attack in for lethal. That's fine, we get to bully up the team. This goes down, take this out. And that's pretty much the game. So nicely take them down there. One and one with the deck. Took down Sultai, which was actually pretty sweet. That's probably one of the harder matchups for us, just with a lot of removal, board wipes. Mm. Actually, Mono Red's probably the hardest. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to wrap this one up. Sorry about that little glitch at the end. I'll be back tomorrow with a full suite of Doom Foretold lists. So if you're interested, uh, just drop, uh, drop by. Probably be around noon Eastern time. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.